Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well today. And welcome to today's Chelsea news video, where I'm going to be talking about three stories. The first being Tomoe Bakayoko. That's right. Oh, oh, Timmy Bakayoko. Oh, oh, together with Angolo. Oh, oh, they never give the ball away. That's it, whatever. Do you remember, man? We all had such high hopes. Anyway, apparently Paris Saint Germain won him. Touch. Also, I'm going to be talking about the reports coming out of Sky Italia saying Tris Matons prefers, préféré into Milan which is a sadness. But you know, how reliable is Sky? Not very, but it does make sense in many ways and I'm gonna talk about that. And finally, Maurizio Sarri wants to swap Pjanic for Jorginho. 30 year old Pjanic for specialist Jorginho. <sighs> I'll be expressing my thoughts on that particular story too. So there's a lot going around football media headlines this last couple of days regarding a Chelsea football club and to be honest as football edges closer and closer you can expect more and more stories starting to surface. So if you want to <laughs> have daily updates on Chelsea news you should subscribe to Football Therapy man and hit that bell notifications icon. Hey man and why not like the video? Help me out. Sweet. Cool, let's go the housekeeping out of the way. Let's get into the content. Bakayoko. Ah. He is a meme, right? And I, I kind of was sorry for the guy. That when he got sent, he got sent off, didn't he? Didn't he get subbed at half time or something? He had a really difficult time at Chelsea Football Club. And he was so highly rated. Chelsea getting Bakayoko was a bit of a coup at the time. That Monaco side that did an absolute madness, that won the league ahead of Paris Saint-Germain, that obviously had a really good run in the Champions League, etc. Chelsea got Bakayoko. Everyone wanted Fabinho, everyone wanted Bakayoko. Of course, everyone, everyone wanted Mbappe, uh, Mendy, Lamar. They were all hot property, do you know what I mean? And Bakayoko was a big one. This midfielder that could be a bit like Yaya Toure, strong, destroyer, uh, good at ball progression, good at just unsettling things. Chelsea thought they had a wicked player. And to be honest, for a second there, so did Chelsea fans. When he started that game against Tottenham, even though he was injured, he wasn't ready to come back in, he played very, very well. In fact, I think he had two games for Chelsea where he played really well and it was like wow we got a player it was worth the 40 million euros or whatever we paid for him to get him superb but it didn't go so well afterwards we all know what happened and he was awful man like it, it, it was probably like a psychological thing like he didn't settle but it didn't go well we loaned him a couple times um and it just it needs to end it's like the danny drink water situation it needs to end now i don't want to say Bakayoko's a bad player. He had good moments at Milan. He isn't a bad player. Obviously, he had good moments at uh, Monaco as well. But we don't need him regardless at Chelsea. And just Frank Lampard didn't really give him a, a look in in pre-season. I think he needs to just go. And apparently Paris Saint-Germain, who wanted him before Chelsea got him, won him again. And they're willing to pay £31 million, or Chelsea want £31 million. The rumoured figure is £31 million. And you know what, man? I'd absolutely rip your hand off. I think Chelsea probably still see value in a player that probably could offer value to another team. Fair enough, Chelsea like getting their money's worth. But, you know, what's, to be honest, in Sterling, that's probably not much less than what Chelsea bought him for, which is actually a really good return considering, you know, he's burnt down a load of his contract, like, time, and he's had very, very difficult times on the pitch. So, I think we should take the money and run. Anyway, I'll keep you guys updated on what happens with Bakayoko over the transfer window. Just swing by football therapy every day, man. Right, let's move on to the next story. And this one kind of bums me out, but I'm not surprised, really. If you watch Football Therapy, you know that I love Drew's Mertens. I think he's hilarious, and I love the way he plays football, and I think his versatility and seniority as a forward could offer this Chelsea football club, Frank Lampard's Chelsea football club, a lot. So I understood why Frank Lampard kept calling up Drew's Mertens and trying to convince the player to come to Chelsea. And maybe for Drew's, if he fancied coming to London, that would be a great idea. Good opportunity, something different. But stories of Italy coming from Sky Italia are saying the Belgian prefers Inter Milan. 
Now, because it's Sky, I fancy just pushing the story to the side, but to be honest, let's think about it, man. He gets to stay in Italy where he's playing now, where he's like settled. He'll get a long-term contract, which he won't get at Chelsea because he's 33. He'll get well, at least like three years, maybe even four years at Inter Milan because it's Serie A, they're like playing older players. Um, so he gets to stay in Italy, he gets to get a long-term contract, and he gets to play with his countryman Romelu Lukaku for Antonio Conte, who's obviously one of the world's best football coaches. Even if you love Frank Lampard as a player and you think he's going to be a great coach, and you might think he's a good coach now, Antonio Conte has a certain allure of winning right now. And when you're 33 years old and you do want a chance to win something before the end, you're going to go to Inter Milan over Chelsea. I'm a Chelsea fan, man, but that's the situation. Do you know what I mean? I get it. So there's so many factors that if you put yourself in Dries Merton's shoes, you'd be like, just go to Inter, bro. It makes sense. So that kind of sucks. I'd love him to come to Chelsea, but I get why he wouldn't, personally. I did a video on uh, Memphis Depay yesterday. I did leave out how he's got a bit of an attitude problem, which is probably should have been mentioned. But in terms of the kind of player he is, the sort of versatile auxiliary forward, someone like him could help Chelsea out a lot more as well. We'll have to see what happens. Maybe Chelsea don't buy an additional winger. They get Boga and Victor Ossimhem. But who knows, I'll keep you updated on the channel. Right, let's talk about this other story that's been floating around the media. <sighs> Sorry, once Jorginho. Fine, we can all believe that, but apparently the latest news story is he wants to offer us Pjanic in a swap deal. Pjanic is, was a good player. He's not quite as specialist as Jorginho, which might be seen as a good thing. But to be honest, is he someone that Chelsea needs? No. Is he worth as much as Jorginho? No. Is he as young as Jorginho? No. Pjanic is 30 years old. None of this makes sense. Unless, unless, this is a deal where Chelsea get Pjanic plus cash and a quite a decent amount of cash as well. Maybe like 30 million plus Pjanic or something. And then Pjanic is just the rotational midfielder. Happy to just chill out in London for a bit. Chelsea use the additional funds from the deal to go supplement another position on the pitch. But does this make sense generally? No, of course not. I am not interested in Pjanic coming to Chelsea. What do I think about Jorginho leading? I'm on the fence. I understand why Frank Lampard likes him, why he's a authoritative figure, or just, he's like, you can understand why he was made vice-captain early doors by the Chelsea coach, and he can make an excellent long pass, we've seen some of his recent assists, obviously he's the penalty taker, but he's not just a penalty taker, he's a penalty specialist, he scores every single penalty, he's missed one for Chelsea in a shootout, but I think generally all the other penalties he's taken, he just buries every single one in just general games and indeed other shootouts, he's, that's valuable in itself, or genuinely, I know you have a 75% chance of scoring a penalty, but with Jorginho it's 100%, so that's got value. And apart from, you know, scoring the odd goal here and there, scoring the penalties, doing like the good long passes. He is a specialist player. He, that's why, you know, that's why Sari wants him. He's that metronomic playmaker, regista, whichever term you would like to use. He is that player. And he's one of the few players in the world that's the best at doing that. Like it or hates it as a Chelsea fan. That's what he does and it's good and it has value. So do I want to swap him for a 30 year old Pjanic who I'm not sure, well, I'm not sure what he'll do in this Chelsea side. Absolutely not. No, thank you. If you want Jorginho, you give us bare peas, bruv, and we reinvest that in somewhere else, and we bring someone in to take the place, or we use Billy Gilmore and Kovacic to play that lone pivot role. Maybe that's enough, maybe train someone else in that role as well, but I don't want Pjanic personally. I'm keen on getting your thoughts on that. So, they are the three stories I wanted to talk about in today's video. Back Yoko, finally going out. Chelsea might actually get decent money for him, which is pretty good. And, you know, I wish him all the best in France at PSG. Hopefully, he can become a good player again. And play in a league where he did really well originally. So, you know, best of luck to Back Yoko. Situation with Dries Mertens. I think he might go to Inter Milan. He might do an interview saying, yeah, I spoke to Frank Lampard. I nearly went to Chelsea. It seems great, he seems great, but this makes more sense for me. But yeah, I get it, we'll have to see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated on the Dries Mertens story. And of course, Pjanic. I don't think there's anything in it personally. I'd be very disappointed if Chelsea swaps Jorginho for Pjanic, but there might be some sort of deal struck eventually. 
with Juventus regarding Jorginho's transfer. We'll have to see. Of course, swing by the channel every single day for Chelsea news. I will keep you guys updated and posted. If you enjoyed this content today, guys, I'd urge you all to like the video. That means a lot. Uh, yep, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Go subscribe to Yann's Yard, my second channel, where I do daily, daily live streams, man. Link in top of the description. That's it for me. You don't enjoy the football. That's not quite. That's not happening. But it's nearly happening. Whatever. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.